So today we're going to be installing an ACT Street Kit, which is a lightweight flywheel and a heavy duty clutch in our customer's E46 BMW. Uh, we're going to talk about the technical points of everything and we're going to do the installation and go for a test drive and tell you what it's like. So our customer has a high mile E46 BMW and we're changing the clutch. He wanted something that was better than stock, but not something that's too crazy. It's, it's his daily driver, so nothing too extreme. He wants to be able to have enough uh, torque capacity to have some mods later as he builds his car bit by bit. Uh, for this, uh, we decided that the ACT uh, street kit was the perfect choice, perfect choice for a daily driver. Uh, we'll be getting into the uh, insides of this, but let's talk about the stock stuff first. Now the E46 is an inline six. Uh, the engine has a lot of torsional whip in it, and um, you know even when it's idling, it has decent idle vibration, even though uh, inline sixes are known for their smoothness. Uh, what some of this can do is cause like a gear rattle noise in the tranny. So to combat this, BMW went to this really heavy dual mass flywheel. Now you have your regular flywheel um, with the friction surface, but it's also like a mass, mass damper. So it's really heavy. It changes the natural frequency of the vibration going to the input shaft, kind of reduces some of that noise. Um, the same kind of technology is used for uh, diesel trucks, for instance, usually. Uh, some Nissans have these dual mass flywheels that I know of. Um, you have your, um, your mass weight that's also the friction surface and you have your other part that bolts to the crankshaft and it's held in place uh, with a rubber like a damping ring and I, there's probably springs in here too. But uh, very smooth but the drawback is it's super heavy. The heavy flywheel is kind of good for maybe initially starting off, but uh, it's not that good for your acceleration. Uh, more on that later. So we have our heavy BMW dual mass flywheel. Uh, we have our stock uh, uh, pilot bearing and throw out bearing. There's nothing that unusual about that. Uh, the clutch disc is a little bit unusual for a street car. Uh, you notice like it's a solid hub. So when you have a dual mass flywheel, you don't really need to have a sprung hub like you typically see. It's just a different way of doing things. I mean, maybe some of the advantages is that the uh, disc itself is relatively light and lighter the disc, the easier on the synchros, but I mean, it's not that light. So, you know, if it was a race car and you had a really light disc, maybe that's something to consider, but uh, mostly uh, you don't have to have the sprung hub because the springs and all that are in here. Uh, your pressure plate is a regular type pressure plate, nothing too, too different. It, it has a diaphragm spring that's kind of windowed out. You notice the diaphragm springs has kind of narrow fingers, so uh, you know, that's kind of a, maybe a way to get the rate a little bit lower. Uh, more on that later. One thing about this dual mass flywheel, it requires a very specific uh, pressure plate. So. A lot of times, if you want to upgrade your clutch and keep the BMW flywheel, none of this stuff is compatible with pr probably any aftermarket stuff, so that's sort of a drawback. But when you look at the stock stuff, it's smooth, quiet, um, probably fine. Really heavy though. The heaviness affects the rotational inertia of the uh, engine. So that means <clears throat> slower acceleration and more sluggish throttle response. Rotating weight um, is kind of uh, a thing that really hampers how freely the car revs. And like a flywheel and stuff doesn't make horsepower, but when you have a lighter flywheel, it frees up horsepower because the power your engine can produce can go to the rear wheels instead of uh, being used to spin up the he heavy flywheel. So. That's the stock setup. It's pretty interesting. It's more like something you find on a diesel. 
but that's how BMW sets their stuff up. So let's talk about the ACT. Um, <clears throat> the ACT uh, flywheel is their street light flywheel. They make a pro light that's really light, but since this car is a daily, uh, we don't want to go too light because uh, you know you have a super light flywheel, the car wants to stall like off the line. You have to slip the clutch more. It's sort of more of a pain in the ass and maybe daily driving and bumper to bumper traffic. We want a lighter flywheel, but we don't want to get crazy light. So when you look at the ACT flywheel, you can see that it's all machined out and it's all basically hollow. When the uh, BMW dual mast had this big heavy iron thing, uh, this is hollow machined out a lot lighter. Uh, this thing here is a uh, trigger for like a sensor. This particular model of 3 Series does not have this sensor, so it's not important, but other models do have a sensor here, and uh, this prevents you from getting a check engine light. Uh, the flywheel is made from a forged chrome molly billet. Uh, forging is like the strongest way to make stuff. Like you get a basically a hunk of metal, heat it up red hot, and smash it in the die with like thousands and thousands of pounds of force. What that does is gets uh, the grain of the metal oriented around the flywheel. And um, this gives it a lot more strength. I, I mean, like when you cut wood, for instance, if you cut it with the grain, it splits really easy. But if you cut against the grain, it's really tough. Metal is the same kind of principle. And forging aligns the grain around the flywheel and increases the strength. Chromoly is an alloy of steel that has molybdenum and chromium in it. When you add those two elements of the steel, it essentially almost doubles the strength. So basically your chromoly is twice as strong as your regular steel. That makes it a good candidate for uh, flywheels. It gives you more burst strength. You don't want your flywheel to burst. Basically that's when it spins really fast and it comes apart and flings burning hot hunks of metal through your whole car and maybe through you. So you want it to be strong. Uh, the ACT flywheel is also SFI certified, so that means they've tested it under severe conditions and it will not burst. Uh, that's a good uh, bit of security there. So this flywheel is a, is a great deal. I mean, it's lighter. It's not too light for daily driving, but it'll give you a nice performance increase. Now you look at the ACT pressure plate. Generally, the, um, the street heavy-duty pressure plates have about 50% more clamping pressure than your typical stock uh, pressure plate. Uh, what clamping pressure means is when the, um, when the pressure ring is all the way out and your clutch pedal is up, uh, that's how much pressure that the pressure plate smashes the disc of the flywheel to. The more, the more clamping pressure, the more um, your clutch is going to hold and the less it's going to slip and so the torque capacity goes up. As you can see, you look at the diaphragm spring here. Um, the fingers are thicker, so that means that they're stiffer and they have more uh, clamping resistance. If you notice like the difference in color between the inside and outside here, um, what that is is induction hardening. So um, it's hardened, so where your uh, throwout bearing rubs on it, like a lot of aftermarket clutches, they don't bother to do that, and, and this part is actually softer, so this starts to wear a groove in the diaphragm spring and eventually can cause it to fail. Um, but we have this induction hardened part here, so for long life. One thing to note, that like most aftermarket clutches, the uh, ACT will not fit on the BMW dual mass flywheel, so if you go to the ACT clutch, you have to get their ProLite flywheel, and most aftermarket clutches aren't going to fit on the weird, weird dual mass, so that's um, typical. It's not some ACT quirk. Uh, you can see it's a semi-metallic material, so you have your um, organic friction comp uh, compound, and you see this... Uh, copper wires woven through there. Uh, that gives it heat resistance and uh, burst resistance. 
like a lot of clutches, don't have any kind of reinforcement like that. And uh, the friction material, like if you do a clutch kick or something, or like a launch, can actually just tear right off the disc. But this reinforcement prevents that from happening. The stock disc has some, some uh, of this reinforcement, but the ACT has a lot more. Now this is a metallic, um, like copper, but copper has a lot of self-lubricating properties and it's not going to chew up your disc and flywheel. That's the kind of reason why they use it. Another cool thing is the disc uses a Marcel spring. So that's kind of like a little bit of a wave to the fingers of the uh, main part of the uh, disc. And what that does is it gives you a little cush. So when you're engaging the clutch, it kind of engages a little bit more gradually. So when you're starting the car off in bumper to bumper traffic, it's a smoother engagement and less chattery. Like uh, you, you've probably seen those full race discs that are just copper pucks. Um, that's one of the reasons why they're kind of more chattery because they don't have any of that cush. Um, that's a really good feature for a street disc. And finally, we come to the sprung center hub. Now, uh, on the BMW part, uh, these springs and th this uh, damper is inside the flywheel, but on the ACT, it's inside the disc. This is how like your typical clutch disc is, where you have the springs. Uh, the ACT part has heavier springs, so they're less likely to bottom out and, um, and ch chatter and give shock to your transmission if you're shifting fast. Stiffer springs. Also, the uh, spring retainer part um, thing is like thicker gauge than what's typical, and it uh, surrounds the spring more. Now, a lot of uh, cheaper clutches, it's not um, contained as well, and these springs fall out and jam your clutch, at, clutch up. The springs falling out is a pretty typical problem for clutches that are used hard, and the ACT addresses that with this heavier duty piece. Um, when you look really close, there's an inner spring also uh, inside this main spring. The inner spring just gives a bit more stiffness and a bit more cush when you're shifting. The ACT clutch disc also has uh, heavy duty stops. Uh, you can probably see them from the side like that. And these stops um, limit the amount that the disc can move um, on the springs. So what the stops do is they let the disc bottom out on the stop instead of the spring, so you're less likely to break a spring. The stop is also thicker and stronger than what you typically find in a uh, aftermarket clutch disc. It's uh, pretty heavy duty. Another good feature is the uh, ACT disc uses a, uh, uh, a hub with a broach cut splines. So you have a very precise fit to your input shaft. A, a lot of um, other clutches don't have uh, such good machining, so there's play. So the clutch disc starts to wear a groove in your input shaft. And then when that happens, as the clutch slides back and forth to engage and disengage, it starts sticking and hanging up. Then you start grinding shifts. But when you have a nice, nicely machined um, hub, you don't have the tendency to do that. Finally, the ACT um, clutch disc is SFI certified, just like everything else. That means an independent body has done the spin testing and uh, burst testing, and it meets all their specs. So that's a good bit of insurance for your safety. So overall, uh, we weighed the um, ACT um, clutch system, and it comes in at about 30 pounds, give or take a few tenths of a pound. Uh, the stock stuff weighs 37 pounds, give or take a few pounds. Like this thing has been pretty worn out. So you're looking at about seven or eight pounds less rotating weight. That's enough to feel a good change in acceleration and better responsiveness. But it's not so light that the car is going to be touchy and it's going to affect the street ability. Uh, with the greater clamping force, the pedal effort's going to go up a, a little bit. Your clamp force is typically with the ACT uh, heavy duty clutch, maybe about 50% more, but the pedal effort goes up maybe 25 or 30%. So that's a pretty good trade off. And this should have pretty smooth engagement without too much chatter. Heavier duty, still pretty streetable, 
I think like since we we don't have the crazy mass in the flywheel, the transmission might be a little bit noisier. Um, maybe not, we'll, but we'll put the sucker in and, and we'll test drive and see how much difference in noise there is. And um, yeah, more performance, um, more torque capacity, and uh, should have good streetability. Let's go put the sucker in and see how it works. So, what do you think about this clutch? Oh, it's way better than the stock. I noticed that when we were just driving around, like pulling out of the parking lot and mm -hmm. stuff, it, it was pretty smooth. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's way smoother, it engages. It just it has a nice feel to it. Yeah, and I mean, there's absolutely no chatter, no grabbiness. Um, I mean, I could tell from the passenger side here, and how, how's the pedal effort? The pedal's nice, man, it's nice and smooth. Um, the stock one was kind of jerky. I could push it in and it would come out and kind of slip. So your old clutch was all worn out. We noticed it was pretty worn out and, and you were actually slipping. Your, your car kind of felt like uh, you're losing power. Yeah, and now with this one, I feel like it's back to, I mean, it feels like a new car to me because it's the first time I felt it like this. Now we got rid of that super heavy uh, dual mass flywheel and uh, we put a lightweight, uh, one piece flywheel in, and we're using the clutch of the sprung hub. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking you probably noticed a lot better acceleration, right? First thing I noticed when I drove off the lot when I picked the car up. Is it like particularly in the lower gears that you feel a lot more yeah, like definitely. liveliness? First and second, it feels nice. You also probably notice with a, with a lighter flywheel, like better shifting too, right? Yeah. Because a lighter flywheel helps the synchros um, work better. So is uh, your shifting cleaner? It makes it fun to shift. It also makes things like heel and toe and rev matching a lot easier. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking the only thing that's a disadvantage is that maybe like when we're sitting idling like this, uh, you hear a little bit more rattle, especially when the tranny's hot. It's not bad though. I, I mean, I hardly hear anything. Push the clutch in. Yeah, you hear how it completely goes away. Yeah. So what that is, is that that's the uh, gear lash you're hearing and the dual mass flywheel is designed to kind of damp out that noise. Uh -huh. um, but I mean, I would rather have a flywheel that's way lighter than that big old heavy thing, right? And, and it's completely normal. So, um, you know, it's nothing to worry about. And, and man, I can, I can barely hear it myself. I mean, if you had the radio on just a little bit, you wouldn't even hear it, I don't think. Yeah, definitely, especially if you had exhaust or something too. It's minor. Compared to how it performs, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, this thing is like, even I could tell from the passenger seat, really smooth. It's fun to drive again. Like, I already like driving this car. I didn't know how worn everything was. Well, plus this thing has about 50% more torque capacity than stock, so when you, um, start doing mods, you're not gonna have to upgrade the clutch or anything, and this clutch could take it. Yeah, and that's another reason why I don't mind that sound, because I know there's more power to come. So there you go, you have a clutch, best of both worlds, totally streetable, totally easy to drive, and uh, actually gives more performance, faster acceleration, and it can hold uh, all your future mods that you're coming, coming up with. Yeah. 
and uh, I'm really glad you're happy. I'm more than satisfied. I already talked to Martin about building more of the motor. <laughs> I got a part list today. <laughs> ACT, heavy duty street clutch, it's awesome. So if you like this content, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want anything done to your car, go to MotoIQ.com and fill out the garage services form. Uh, it's the link on top, really easy. Till next time, we'll see you later. <laughs>